Welcome back to the Keeper Torchlit Podcast. I'm Sarah. I'm Jack. And I am Sam. All right, so this episode's titled, I Can Taste the Victory. Do you guys know who couldn't taste the victory who? this past week? Cooper's favorite oh. team, Michigan State. Oh. Yeah, they got beat up by the same people that beat us up. It's yeah. kind of like if you have an older brother that's always like pushing you around and stuff, but then all of a sudden he sees a bully at school that pushed you around even more three times <laughs> in that same day. Mm-hmm. And then he beat that guy up and you're like, you know, my brother's pretty awful, but at least he beat up the guy that beat me up three times. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what I was thinking, Sam. But All you right. know who's pretty good well, at beating people up? <laughs> <laughs> like, if I was in a fight, this is the person who I would want by my side. Who was Barack that? Obama? No. <laughs> it's Leia. Whoa! What? Leia? Do I say something wrong? <laughs> yeah, Leia! Leia! Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, how many people would you beat up for, for us three? Infinite. An infinite amount of people. Wow. I would take on the world for you guys. Wow. wow. Where would it be? Would it be in the metal frat basement? I, you know, I do love beating people up in the metal frat basement. <laughs> cool. I'm wow. a little surprised I don't get kicked out every time I come to a party here. But. Um, I'm curious about um, the edit of season one so far, whether it represents... Uh, the reality that was going on or how much you how much it does because i feel like it's that's the thing about making edit is yeah you know you need to string all these different stories together and some things george mentions he has his insider info some things can be included and I'm, I'm curious about that it's interesting that you asked that because i think i i mean i always had an idea in my head when i'm watching you know reality television shows that like okay like this may not be really what happened. This is whatever the you know producers want to portray to us. And I really did not understand that until I watched this. I, I would I would argue that a lot of my story is left out of this season completely. Mm-hmm. So I I yeah, there's there's a lot of of things that didn't happen really how it, it looks like it did, especially with regards to me. Mm-hmm. But you know, okay. it is what it is. Yeah. So do we want to Uh, like dive into some of those instances that you're talking about you can like go back to previous episodes uh yeah sure no no i i totally i took notes in preparation for this oh Oh, oh. Um, i'm thinking for the flow of the episode it could work best for us to jump into the episode okay and we'll go through it and as we go through things there'll be points that will like connect back to other okay yeah yeah Yeah. all right so post-tribal we just lost our our boy Cooper. Oh no! You know, I I said this in the show. Um, like I'm pretty sure almost exactly, but like I really did picture when Cooper went home, it was gonna be me. Like mm-hmm. I was gonna turn on him, and I didn't picture that like before we started. But, like as the show was going on, as it became clear that like Mitch was my number, Cooper to the end. You and Cooper are kind of opposing sides, right? And- I really like did picture him going down at him and so I really like for me it really sucks that he went home because really it was so so they didn't show but like Thal called um me and Cooper like I I kid you not 20 minutes before tribal Mm -hmm. and so me and Mitch had this plan pretty much all week that either Cooper or Liz was going home so Liz plays the idol Cooper goes home or Liz goes home with the idol in the pocket either way me and Mitch are in a good position Mm -hmm. and basically Fall comes over and it's like, you know, we know he's been double playing all week, but we don't really care. So Fall's like, you know what, like, we, we want to put the votes on Mitch. And I, of course, am not okay with that. And there was this moment where we were all it was like, why don't we just vote out Tarowski then? Like, if you really want to vote someone else. And he was like, no, I won't do that. And I wouldn't vote Mitch. So I was freaking out and jumping up and down and like point because I knew that he had like triple played us. But basically, I could have just voted Mitch out. I, that would not have been, like, good for my game in any way. But I, I very much was just in, like, the mode of, at this point, Cooper's going to find out I'm lying. Like, there's nothing I can really do to protect him. But I'm not. Like, it, it, it didn't all of a sudden, like, revealing that me and Mitch were friends, like, wasn't important to me. Mm-hmm. Which is another thing that they're left out of this. Yeah, so yeah. I guess the one other thing about right post-tribal, there was a really didn't include and this was the fact about 
me and Mitch kind of being in communication that week because I essentially said that during the pre-tribal mess. I was like, I've been talking to Mitch all week and I know that he's been lying to us, which wasn't weird to Cooper because Cooper knew I was talking to Mitch. But, you know, as you watch the week, you can tell they don't really know how close I am with Mitch. And that was really, really important Mm -hmm. to our game that week. They could not know. Like, we wanted them to think that Mitch thought he was in the middle with Liz. And so it was me and Brittany working together. We did not want them to know that Mitch was 100% with me. Mm -hmm. So I came up with this lie that was really effective. And I don't know how it was effective, but I explained this like right after tribal. I was like, look, Mitch and I had a deal that, you know, like he was really close with Liz and I was really close with Cooper and we knew the two were gunning for each other. So we were like, let's protect both of them. And let's come up with a plan that, you know, you protect Liz, I protect Cooper. And that's why me and Mitch were talking. Mm -hmm. And everyone bought it. Everyone, I guess, like, Liz was like, oh, that, like, that's kind of weird. That makes sense. And the other thing that I would say that was right after tribal is Thal went on this really big, long apology about being super close with Liz. In the episode, it's not entirely clear, but it was, like, we knew that Thal and Liz were as close as they were. That's, that wasn't a secret anymore. Like, mm-hmm. we totally knew that. Oh. Okay. Because I yeah. remember Liz saying she was weirded out that nobody thought that she was close with Thal still. But you did know that. No, okay. we totally knew that. Yeah. And we, you know, skipping forward a lot, we did not realize the lengths she would go yeah. to Thal. But we definitely <laughs> oh, knew that they had this secret relationship. Okay. And we worked really, really hard me and Mitch worked really, really hard to cover up our, like, how close yeah. we were. Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking of you and Cooper, we have someone very special who has some more insight into your relationship. <laughs> <laughs> and you've seen her in a couple of episodes. She's had some guest appearances. Who is it, guys? Is it Cooper? <laughs> <laughs> no, Cooper's already been on here. He's old news. No, it, yeah, that's true. It's Wait, freaking Catherine Reed. Woo! I go by Katie, but thank you. <laughs> Wait, but Catherine, you're, you're going by Katie now? Oh my god, yes. I'm pretty sure the episode they called you Cat. Cooper said he was at his friend's Catherine's house. Wow, yeah. I didn't, I didn't know that you changed your name. That's yeah. pretty cool. No one would have put that together. I'm Cooper's friend, Catherine. I'm <laughs> Leia's roommate, Katie. It's a big mess. <laughs> oh, hi guys. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, of course. Thanks for staying up so late. So for those of you who don't know, Katie is in Europe right now. And what time is it for you? It is 4.30 in the morning. Yeah, so... <laughs> okay, so some of that cuts out. But yeah, basically, Katie is a trooper for staying up until 4.30 a.m. to film this. And and then now she's going to talk a little bit about how she knows Cooper and Leia. I've known, I've known Cooper and Leia since freshman year. I was Leia's roommate. During the filming and production of Survivor Season 1, fun fact, I like to give myself the credit. I was actually the reason they applied. I sent them both the application. And I was supposed to apply myself, but I missed the deadline. Oh, but they oh, both no. they, they both uh, applied because I sent them the application. And then... Do you guys talk about um, like Cooper didn't originally get on? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's yeah. true. The first matchup yeah, between Cooper true. and Leia. Yeah. Leia is cast, in the, <laughs> and then Cooper is put on the uh, the short list. <laughs> Cooper. <laughs> oh, oh, there we go. Man. One zero. Yes. Leia lead right now. <laughs> Leia in the lead. So it was really cute because they didn't tell each other. Leia, and correct me if I'm ever wrong about anything, Leia, but. They didn't originally tell each other that they made it. No. Until, wrong. like, you guys did tell each yes. other. Are we, are we lying okay, about that? I thought it was like... lying about? He told me the second he got the email. I told him the second I got the email. We knew long oh, okay. before we showed up for the first time that we were going to be. And Cooper had this whole plan where he was going to act okay. surprised and he was going to make that part <laughs> of the show. But no, no, no. No, no, we knew. So you guys just didn't tell me. It's fine. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so we did. did. School. <laughs> no, you didn't tell me until... 
the first day until like the day of the challenge. No, I no, think. no. We knew. Wow. Long you go to Ireland long. and you didn't. Forget. No, I'm saying you didn't tell me, Leia. I, we, we definitely did tell you. Like, I'm positive you remember. Okay. Huh? It's okay. irrelevant. <laughs> it's irrelevant. Because I remember you guys having conversations tell- where you were like, oh my God, you guys are going to talk about it all the time. Like, there was anticipation leading <laughs> up to it. Okay. Leia will you guys can tell- already hated Survivor <laughs> You guys can tell. <laughs> you guys can tell Leia and I were great roommates. Yeah. <laughs> um, we were great roommates. <laughs> We were. It worked out really well. Um, but so, the, yeah, they had their whole plan. They were going to act like they didn't know each other. And what isn't shown in the show, which I kind of wanted to talk about and highlight, was just the lengths that they went to to make it seem like they didn't know each other. So, like, anytime we hung out as a group, and we hung out a lot, like, very often. Like, every night. First oh. of all, this was, yeah, this was um during in the fall so there were football games they actually took turns tailgating with our friends <gasps> like we did they would like they would be like okay it's cooper's it's cooper's game to hang out with all of you leah's <laughs> gonna go hang out with like her family or her uh rugby friends or whatever and then yeah and that i don't know what cooper would do when he couldn't hang out with us but just um, <laughs> yeah <laughs> i don't so know beautiful. so they <laughs> they would they would like take turns hanging out with us and then when we would like go out all together they would make sure there was no one at whatever party we were at mm. they changed their each other's names into in their phones to what you were like lewis i was Cooper lewis became wine bomb or something and <laughs> yeah really no, subtle. lewis winter garden is what it was so subtle oh. winter garden yeah <laughs> and he was and then Colin cooper Jameson. was in Cullen, yeah. And what's <laughs> what's funny, because Cooper would have, like, meetings in his apartment. Well, they would both have meetings in our apartments, and Cooper's apartment had this whiteboard with points for this game that our friends played. The game is irrelevant, but they would have, like, <laughs> Leia's name up there. So they even changed the names on, like, our whiteboard uh, points or whatever to those different names to oh make it God. seem like the all the time. they weren't friends at all. Um, but then why um, do you get in a group Halloween costume together? You know, <laughs> we were living our lives. Cooper was against that. And we have this one friend. <laughs> well, <laughs> she likes to post pictures and we begged everyone not to post. And she posted. They were very strict. They were very strict. They would. They yelled at us about posting and tagging them both in a photo. So And we have one friend who was just beyond helping she was gonna post that halloween picture <laughs> and well us in it so well you guys are still better than the alex's i feel like at managing this you didn't post a snapchat story of you guys in a hotel yeah. am i allowed to just say that it did not matter that we like didn't know they were roommates like literally you- we knew the entire game we from day one they were working together from day one we assumed they were working together like mm-hmm. holy mother of they in the show they always freak out about it and i'm sitting there like we knew we didn't care <laughs> cooper and i was the the like revelation that, that was, was a the, big like, one scandal. yeah and i'm honestly i'm surprised it it didn't seem like that big of a deal the way it was edited in in the show it was a huge deal in fact the reason yeah. that liz found the idol is because of it because mitch called me and told me that britney had found that picture minutes before george texted us about that idol clue so i was on my laptop so uh, this is a funny story this is actually good so i was on my laptop in the library right in front of the library this is fine i was i was 15 (laughs) from where george posted the clue he he says that he saw me when he came (laughs) in and posted the clue i was on my computer frantically going through facebook looking for this picture i was Oh, freaking my out my heart God. was beating wow. i didn't check my phone i didn't i didn't see the idol hunt i didn't see george walk right past me to post the idol uh, clue because i was sitting there on my laptop freaking out because mitch had just told me about the picture being bad. damn oh my god i did not realize those were at the same time at all it was yeah. at the exact same time and yeah because you could have found that idol because you were like right there i that was not changed the anything. idol hunt and I was right there. I was literally 15 feet away from where the clue was posted, what it was posted. Did not check my phone. Oh, my and God. And you didn't notice, like, Liz and everyone else running past? I mean, I was in the library in that big, like, glass, mm-hmm. like, atrium. I 
staring at my laptop. Like, no, I didn't know. They, they yeah, were kind the of to the side. Like, yeah. in the main lobby, right? Um, uh, that's where I was. I was in oh, the main lobby. lobby. But no, I didn't see them come in. <laughs> Oh my god! That's how in, in freaked out I was. That's crazy. That's crazy. Was Mitch the one where I, um, the other episode he had asked you about the relationship with Cooper and you're talking about it? And he was like, "Oh, oh no!" Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, I, Leia, I can't believe you. <laughs> oh, Leia. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he was a little staged because I had told him a little bit before that. Um, oh, he. But every, we hadn't talked about it yet. Because he said in the in the confessional, he made it sound like. Oh yeah, Leia doesn't know, but I actually know. And oh. then like he made it sound he made it look like that was yeah. the meeting where you first like realized that he knew. Yeah. And it was just so over the top. It was his reaction was so hilarious. It was like, definitely obviously forced. I but. love Mitch so much. Um I think it's hilarious. The 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 meeting was true to the extent that we hadn't discussed it yet. Yeah, like in but, person. Yeah. But like I don't really know how to describe me and Mitch's relationship. I made a decision very arbitrarily from about our second meeting Mm -hmm. that like, I trust this kid. I'm telling him everything. And I even, I, I, the only reason I didn't tell him about Cooper is because I didn't want to break his trust in me. Mm -hmm. But I, at a certain point, even though Cooper knew about Mitch, Mitch didn't know about Cooper. Like, like it was always Mitch. You trusted Mitch more than Cooper. I trusted Mitch more. And I, I don't really know how to explain it. I guess he felt that too. Because if I were him, I would have freaked out about it. But he was super chill about it. And watching his confessionals, he seems to have been honest about that. Mm-hmm. He really did believe that I was with him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, like, why did you not want to be 100% honest with Cooper? Like, why do you choose Mitch over him? So, it wasn't it wasn't framed like that in my head. When, I, when Cooper and I decided to work together, I always meant it. And I really mm-hmm. did want to work with him. But... From the very start, we were very, like, honest with each other. We're, like, we're both gamers. Like, we both want to win. And we both kind of had this understanding between us. And he can say whatever he wants, but we had this understanding where if it came to a point where, like, one was a threat to the other, like, we didn't have this all-encompassing outside of the game. We're never going to turn on each other Mm -hmm. relationship. We had, we want to work together. This is a huge advantage. We are friends. We do trust each other. But... That's, that just wasn't the basis of me and Mitch's relationship. While I was closer friends with Cooper, the basis of our survivor relationship was this makes sense and it makes sense until it doesn't. But when I decided to work with Mitch, just the mentality of it was, you know, I'm working with you no matter what. Mm-hmm. And I'm trusting you no matter what and I'm telling you everything. And it was just that, like, mental difference. The way that I just viewed my relationship with Mitch mm-hmm. versus with Cooper. Yeah. That makes That's fun. really interesting. I feel like that could in a way make it, yeah, yeah, it might almost be easier to trust somebody that you don't know that well as well because you can kind of build a relationship from the start yeah. and like in, like with only in the survivor context rather than like this person is like really, really close to, but also like we're so close that we're competitive with each other, mm-hmm. like in a way that might not be as beneficial in survivor. Whereas like with someone like Mitch, you're not, he's not going to be like, Oh man, I'm such good friends with Leia. I want to be competitive. Yeah. Just yeah. for the just for the sake yeah. of like our friendship. Like I feel like no matter like what friend you have, you almost like want to be like, I want to beat them. Like, you know, unless you're like literally like, I don't know, like super, super closely involved, there's always gonna be a part of you that's just like, I want to one up on my yeah. friend. Mm-hmm. I, and I think our friends, like, and Katie can talk about this, but like <laughs> our friends were very much accusing us of having turned on each other. Every time we would talk, they'd be like, oh, you're lying to each other. Yeah. That was, so, yeah, that was more that. one specific friend, shout out Ian <laughs> Harris, but <laughs> I think it was funny. Well, it got annoying when we would hang out because they would always go to Leia's room to talk Survivor. And it eventually, it happened so often that we would just say that they were going to have sex instead <laughs> because they were together talking Survivor so often in my room with the door closed but because they didn't want to hear it because we were we would have these family dinners and we were banned from talk no survivor at the dinner table (laughs) yeah exactly exactly but it was okay might I just say because it's been interesting to see the whole game unfold whereas like I'm like kind of reliving it but like I only ever heard of or saw Leia's side of things I didn't even hear of Cooper's all that much because I didn't live with him Mm -hmm. but um because Leia would come home. Oh, Leia, I miss these times. You would talk strategy with me. It was great. <laughs> and, but honestly, like, I think Cooper, like, Cooper lied to you in that one episode. And you, like, talked about it. It frustrated you. 
And that's when all of us, we were like, Cooper, turn on Leia. Leia's going to have to, like, get rid of Cooper soon. That was, like, oh. our friend group mentality. <laughs> that episode, they gave almost all the credit to Mitch. I, I was a little, because, well, they, they showed my beginning rant where I was like, I don't like being lied to. Mm-hmm. But, you know, in, in uh, the that, one. And that was the episode title. Yeah, it was. It, I got the name of a few yeah. episodes. I yeah, you did. That. Yeah, you did. But in that episode, basically, it it made more sense for Mitch to do the legwork, like Mitch to be the one that like went to the Alex's and said, Oh, Cooper's going to turn on you. So you have to turn on him. And then it made sense for me to go to Cooper and say, Mitch blundered everything up. Like we, you got to flip this week. But the story that they didn't include in that is in the beginning of the week, Mitch didn't want to do that. And they kind of showed me at one point kind of hinting towards this, but they didn't show me actually do it. I, they were never going to really vote Mitch off, Mm -hmm. but I lied to Mitch. I was like, Cooper told me you're going home. Like, Mitch, like, it, like you like you have to do this. We have to get Cooper to flip this week. Otherwise, you're going home, which was a lie. And then, you know, they showed a lot of Mitch's conversations and not a lot of mine on the other side. But I had tons of conversations with Liz calming her down that Mitch had done this. And with Cooper, like, explaining to him, like, why Mitch had done this. Mm-hmm. But this was my plan. And I initiated that. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, like, Mitch, like, worked, like, it was, I take it back. It was our plan. But it made it look like Mitch was doing it, even though yeah. and Mitch was it all was the execution. at least even if mm-hmm. not like, you know. Yeah, it's tough. I do think that the edit is meant to like tr- try and show as much as possible, but also show as much as possible that fits the narrative, you know, whatever the narrative ends up being. Yeah. Um, um, real quick, while we're still on the note of things not being shown, after Cooper's voted out, this is just something I wanted to bring up. He came over to our apartment afterwards. And oh. this kid, I have never seen expressed express as much emotion as <gasps> I did when he came back and he just ran into Leia's room and started bawling. Oh, oh no. His eyes out when he like, it's kind of, oh. it's crazy. And you get in this episode you get a little taste of it when you say when you see liz have to drop out of the challenge because she has to go to work like these kids are in school working and and trying to play this game and like you get as far as they are at this point and they're so invested so it's like oh yes it's crazy emotion you dropped a crap. I had to drop. I, I was failing econ 401 i had to drop it because i was spending so much time survivor damn Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's dedication. I thought I thought Cooper held it together pretty well on the episode, yeah. but yeah, no, he broke down afterwards. Oh no. <laughs> it was it was really sad. It was it was terrifyingly sad. I've never seen him so distraught in my life. I got oh, back God. and it was like he was still in my room at the time. And I remember it was rough. <laughs> this is so sad. Yeah. You know, it was sad. It was really sad. And then, of course, Ian's sitting there, and he's like, I told you, Cooper, Leia turned on you. And, like, <laughs> shouting all of this stuff. And we're just like, Ian, shut up. Anyway. Aww. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't turn on him. Wow. I didn't save him. That's honestly how I see it. Oh, there was, okay, sorry. There was one last thing I wanted to talk about while Cooper was still in the game. Because we had to pretend like Leia and Cooper didn't know each other, there was one, Leia, if you remember this, there was one meeting that Lay was planning on having at our apartment that Cooper was going to come to. And she was like, Katie, if you're here, you have to act like you don't know Cooper. Because everyone else in the meeting had already met me as Lay's roommate from, like, other meetings. So she's like, you have to pretend like you don't know him. And I was like, okay, yeah, I can, like, walk in and just be like, oh, hi, like, nice to meet you. And then maybe I'll, like, flirt with him a little bit. Like, be like, <laughs> oh, like, like wink at him. Like, oh, like, hey, like, you're kind of cute. What? <laughs> it didn't end up happening. I wasn't home for the meeting. But it's fun little stuff that got to happen because we didn't know Cooper. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's funny how for most people, like, your whole friend group kind of gets involved and, like, invested. Yeah. And it just, like, becomes part of me. I don't know. Like, I know with the exception of Akshay, who didn't tell anyone. But, like, for most people, I know, like, your friends know, like, everything that's going on. Yeah. Or, like, yeah. just for Brittany, as Brittany a few yeah. weeks ago was talking about how she told her class and they would, like, ask her about it every week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I told the polo team. They would ask me about it at practice. Yeah. 
I will stuff. say though, this is kind of random, but I saw on my friend's Snap story that semester a picture of Mitch holding up the individual immunity necklace <laughs> from one of the times he won it. And like, yeah. But anyways, that, I just thought that was weird. But yeah, any, anyways though, so sad about Cooper yes. has left the game. Very sad. And yes, Leia has, I guess, come out victorious this time in, uh, in that duel <laughs> against Cooper. It's mm-hmm. been... Cooper, you won the first battle against him. You uh, were not on the short list. <laughs> And then you won the second battle too when you guys went up head to head. Ping pong, yeah. Ping pong. And then Cooper beat your entire no, tribe. He Cooper did beat not. Meza. We went. <laughs> we we went yeah. three and three. He didn't. I I to this day he did not beat me in the memory challenge. We went <laughs> three and three. I just should have volunteered earlier. That was on me. Oh, mm-hmm. I, for the re- well, then he had superior strategy in volunteering earlier. We'll put oh. it. We'll oh. still. We'll say that it's um, Cooper and South score two to one with a little asterisk next to the one, and that one's because because Leia has not verified it, yeah. but it is two to one. Um, and now Leia has outlasted Cooper in the game, three to one. Wow! So I um, guess way to go, one. Leia. Leia's come out on top in this situation. It really Coop- doesn't look like that. The thing is, Cooper it, but... Cooper was very good at locating <laughs> idols, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. Maybe well, I found the general one. area <laughs> of idols. That's just true. Just <laughs> That's th- this is one more thing that uh, they didn't include is that when I found the idol, I would have told Cooper if I was really convinced he had one and just wouldn't yeah. tell me. If he had told me that he had an idol, I would have told him about mine. Mm. But I was like. Just in case he actually has one and he just wants to have one thing up on me, I'm not going to give that to him. Like, mm. So you had the one thing up instead. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Which turned out to hurt me because he was mad that I lied about it. But, yeah. you know, it is what it is. It is what yeah. it is. And uh, unfortunately, very sadly for Cooper, very sadly for, I think, a lot of the audience, uh, his torch was snuffed. And then uh, we immediately get to Mitch's reaction on the whole thing. Yeah. Mitch's heart sank. And he finds a great plan for yeah. Thal, but he's, he got so greedy. He got he got so greedy. Thal got greedy. Thal did get greedy. He did. Thal like, had yeah. a plan that he should have been fine with, and mm-hmm. he was like, "Let's save her idol." And uh, the thought that the fact that he thought he could triple play us and we wouldn't be sus, even mm. if because we knew every move he was making, but even if we didn't, we would have been suspicious of that. Like we were not going to change the vote two seconds before tribal. That wasn't yeah. going to happen, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, Brittany was also mad. She was saying how it was strategically dumb what Thal did. So yeah, was Thal, like, Thal kind of pissed some people off. Yeah, he, after he, that tribal. Yeah, I think I said it last night too. But he liked the perfect to be the enemy of the good there, and like he was going to be in a very good position if he just let his mouth stay shut. I think. Yeah, it uh, at this point kind of looks like it looks like we're kind of seeing the trio of the Alexes and Liz. And we're kind of seeing Leia, Brittany, and Mitch. Kind which of it would have been opposing. that trio, those two sets of trios, which me and Mitch were fine with um, anyways, except Liz wouldn't have had an idol if he hadn't. Right. So you know what? Yeah. In the end, Thal's plan like kind of worked because he got he got to keep the idol and he got to get one of our side out. That's yeah. true. But he, I, he, I feel like he wanted to not piss off anyone, which I feel like was not possible in the position yeah. he was in. Yeah, he. I think we talked. I think somebody said it really good last week. We were talking that um, he. W- I think it was Jack. You were saying that like, he, why you need to make the great move instead of the per- instead of like ri- like risking for the perfect one. Yeah. What was it exactly? You said I don't remember the way you said. I, it. I don't. I don't remember either. But you know what I'm talking make about. Make a right? great move instead of risking it for the perfect. Let one. perfect yeah, be the enemy exactly. of the good. Yes, that's what it was. Perfect be the enemy of the good. Yeah. Wait, can I you say that, that again? The what? So you would let the perfect uh, be the enemy of the good. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's that's pretty accurate for him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Either way, yeah, Thal did get a lot of uh, good screen time last episode, and it looks mm-hmm. like for for pretty good reason. He definitely shook things up. You know what else got shook up? Are there what? some some outfits this week? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> good segue. <laughs> We have the Alexes becoming some fashion icons. They they really stepped it up this episode. Yeah. I know Tarowski's oh. sweater. His sweatshirt. His sweatshirt Boys was really popular. Sad. Boys <laughs> make me sad. Oh my and God. I didn't get the reference, so I just thought, like, 
it was just he was wearing a sweater that said boys boy, like sad. sad it's actually a tour hoodie from or sweatshirt from the boy band Rockhampton. check them out <laughs> Oh, and yeah. according to Tarowski, he got the sweater a while ago, so it's not in stock anymore. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's just no. he's just a little bit too cool. Like, oh, sorry, no one else gonna have it. I got it so long ago. Mm-hmm. It was I was hit that long ago. So vintage. Yeah. And then yeah. Thal was wearing a, a an also wearing a sweater, but his sweater had an ice cream sundae on it. Ooh, oh, it's just because yeah. he's so sweet. That's why. Yeah, it's because he's so sweet. But you like, know, I... but sorry. kind of icy too. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Iceman. You know, the one thing I do want to say is we've kind of seen the pattern of the fashion icons immediately after kind of ge- kind of having a curse at this point. I mean, we hey. had the fashion icons of uh, Nikhil Shay, and Nikhil. Shay going up so early. They kind of got past to Liz with her choker, and then look what happened to Liz. Um, she choked. The thing is, it didn't happen in the same episode, too. She wore the choker. <laughs> but then it was a couple of weeks later. Yeah, thanks, Just Sarah. like we recognize that Nikhil has his Mario <laughs> shirt takes a couple episodes later and something bad happens yikes so, is that i really hope that we're not just spilling disaster for thal and tarowski wow. by uh by the fashion icon bug kind of getting to them i mean the challenge was kind of a disaster for thal that was true <laughs> the challenge. But, yeah let's yeah, go into the challenge. challenge i so my biggest thought on the challenge is i finished the knots a, i don't remember how much <laughs> no. I, looked. I finished the knots a lot before everyone else and this is fantastic because i knew i was gonna be good at that i'm i'm untangling headphones all the time oh mm. you know in the, in the days before the airpods right yeah, I have my own AirPods, oh, yeah. By the way. mitch would have definitely had some AirPods. <laughs> oh yeah and, and Trowski. we're both in the Ross school business which is why they took AirPods. they took the penalty you know they did they both took the penalty which is so <laughs> weak but i finished the knots i unlike my first three ping pong shots made it in the cup there was no water in the cups yeah, my ball what? kept bouncing out of the cup it happened 20 different times i and i was losing my mind getting angry which was making me worse at it because <laughs> i had landed it in the cup and it had bounced out so many times and i was so frustrated because britney's for example when it fell in the cup the cup kind of tipped over so hers might have bounced out we don't know and I and George kept being like, no, it doesn't count. No, it doesn't count. Wow. And I was like, if there if there had been water in those cups, I would have won that challenge because I would yeah. have had such a head start. Yeah. But, you know, alas, it wasn't to be. Dang, I'm curious, hard. Leia, would you have chosen to run or do the puzzle? I would have done the puzzle. Okay. I would oh, have yeah. started it before Thal started it. So I'm pretty good oh at puzzles. Gosh. I probably would have. I love how I love how Mitch talked about Fall in the puzzle afterwards. How just how cocky he was. Mm-hmm. Oh wow, Fall just Fall just couldn't even do a, a stupid little easy puzzle. I could not believe how bad he was at that. <laughs> and also, uh, some people were curious how long the run to the Big House Stadium was, and so I, I mapped it. And from the Yost Arena where they were at to the Big House is about 0.8 miles one way. Oh, really? Oh, shoot. And, and, you know, you're cutting yeah. corners, which Google Maps can't be. So it's probably more like 0. 0.6 or something. Yeah, so he, probably so he only ran like a mile? A mile and a half. A mile and a half? Yeah. He actually yeah. Like, he just run a marathon. Like, yeah. well, I was out there running was a marathon. Sprinting. And it took me four hours. I couldn't believe it. Oh, I mean, so, sprinting a mile so... and a half is like... Hard. Okay, I don't know about you guys. That's a lot. I would be out of breath. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Sam. I could not Sorry do that. Just, that <laughs> Stud athlete. Stud, oh you could do like two minutes, mile and a half, easy. Sam and I run together sometimes. Yeah, yes, we yeah. do. Thursday, Thursday morning, <laughs> Thursdays. Liz was not good at this challenge. <laughs> Liz no. could not get those knots done. Oh. Which is funny because doesn't she have to like tie the knot soon with Mitch? Oh. oh. <laughs> then. Yeah. Um, Didn't get too tied up in her lies. Yeah. <laughs> So then Mitch comes back and finishes seconds before Thal. Photo finish. Photo Mitch finish. falls on the ground really dramatically and like lays there for like 10 minutes. <laughs> he was, I think he was almost Maddie back to lay out, am I right? Yeah. 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 You know, we we were on the phone with 911 <laughs> and they were kind of talking <laughs> us through CPR and we were like, okay, I think we're good. I thought that it said that I thought that he said he had been gone like 20 minutes though. What do you mean? 
That's that's pretty slow mile and a half. I know it's not. No, it's really fast. Like he, he was a really I know. good runner. I, I was gonna him. say. So like, maybe it was more like point eighty. Maybe he did do. It maybe he must have done really fast then. That's why it had taken Thal like from when Thal started. Like time elapsed was like twenty five minutes of him working on the puzzle. But Mitch started running right like later than that. So and also oh, yeah, he might have had to deal with like like lights. You know. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, lights? he seemed. Yeah, like I, think, like, I would imagine that like, Mitch is like, his hair. Oh, him. yeah. I would imagine that Mitch is probably pretty good at running like the Midwestern boys. Mm-hmm. And um, <laughs> I think that he probably just ran very, very fast. Yeah. Um, Mitch is a fast runner. Like, yeah. we can give him a lot if of you're, shit. If you're like... sprinting, if you're sprinting for like one and a half miles, then yeah, that's definitely going to tire you out. Yeah. You're going to collapse on the ground and laugh about how utterly pathetic. The fall, fall and trap <laughs> are at challenges <laughs> compared to you. So Mitch was on the ground, but then like the next scene, we have the Alexes are on the ground. Oh, they were like wrestling. <laughs> Do you remember the scene? And then they kind of stop. And Thal was like, "Can we kiss?" Oh my! Oh, God. when they got home, and, and everybody got, like, in America was on the edge of their seats, just hoping and wishing. And then George just just. Cuts the scene. Yeah. He just leaves leaves the, the rest of the imagination, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! But yeah, Thal has no votes, and Taraski has sixteen. Yet Taraski can taste the victory. Oh yeah. Okay, you were saying how you went out of her way to save someone else, and that you didn't do that for Cooper. Right. No, it was just it was just the way that he went home. Like like I yeah. said earlier, like I I had really pictured him going home, and like. It being because I had blindsided him yeah, and like me outsmarting him, and I knew surprised. for a while, like I felt pretty confident my relationships were more in a position where I could turn on him, like he needed me more. So he went home, kind of. If he had gone home with Liz playing the idol, I would have been more like, "All right, I feel like better about this. Like this was my plan." Right. But he went home was just such a clusterfuck, and so like, just like me straight up choosing Mitch over him, mm. and. And just, like, it wasn't me, like, trying to send him home. It was me just kind of shrugging and being like, oh, okay, I won't help you. And yeah. I felt bad about that. And that was, like, that was kind of sad. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm kind of curious, like, right after that, he got voted out. Like, was it kind of awkward between you guys for a little bit? Or did you just go no. straight back to not we were fine. Okay. Yeah, we, we talked that week. And, you know, we couldn't talk about the game because he was on jury, but. Oh, we were right. like, you know, like we were friends when we started this. We were friends when we played this. We're friends okay. now. Oh, that's so. good. Are you still friends? With we are still friends. Yeah. <laughs> so we should talk about Brittany now, maybe. Yeah. Oh, well, yes. Yeah. So um, Liz was saying how you, Leia, like you as in Leia, and Brittany were like kind of sucking up to her. <laughs> was that true? Were you sucking up to Liz? Me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. She's saying how everyone was apologizing and that you and Brittany were sucking up to her. Well, so we were never planning on, like, we knew that we were voting separately from them. We knew they were voting for us. Okay. It was more just about we wanted, like, we, it was really important to me and to Brittany that Liz didn't just assume we were for sure voting with Mitch. And so we didn't need her. So I, it was really important to both me and Brittany that Liz thought we were scrambling to get back on her good side. Even though, oh, like, okay. we knew that was impossible. We mm-hmm. knew that, like... So, yes, we were kissing up. And we were both kind of, like, we didn't want the votes to go on us. Yeah. So, like, that... But, mm-hmm. it, you know, we... So, I would say that was true. We were definitely kissing up to Liz that week. That's okay. funny. I can just see, like... Just imagine, like, you and Leia all of a sudden being, like... I mean, you and Brittany's being, like, Oh, like, Liz, oh, you're my favorite. Oh, I'm so... I'm so sorry I voted for yeah, you. Yeah, no, like, that's pretty oh. what happened. I will say the three of us are very good friends now. Yeah. And we, like, text almost every day. I that's awesome. Like, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, the three of us are very close. It doesn't really show that in the show, but we did, like, build, like, real relationships with each other. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You guys have been together since uh, the very beginning. I of the know. Game. That's the thing. Like, I feel like it's a big deal that, like, your alliance is really is starting to turn on each other now. Of all the Maisons. We survived a long time, but we were not working with each other for a lot of it, so. Yeah, and you know, it all, it all fell apart when Matthew Israel went out of the game. I think that's... <laughs> yeah, true. that's when the shit hit the fan. Mm-hmm. Um, Wait, like, I have a he question He was the glue holding you together. Yeah, ask me, you know ask me anything. All right, so at this point in the game, what pe- people left did you think that you had a good chance of beating at the end? 
I didn't think I had a chance of beating anyone but Mitch and Brittany, pretty much. I, I okay. you know, I it was very clear. It was a very Neela jury. Um, if an Alex made it to the end, I didn't think I could win. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, so that's why you were like, all right, let's go Maison Strong, vote out an Alex. Right. You were very ad- yeah. So my and- plan that week which I, I mean, they don't show this, but like Mitch and Brittany and I sat down, it must've been for like three hours and we were just sitting like talking, like, what is our play? We, mm-hmm. we sat down. The first thing we said is we're voting together. Three of us, you know, there was talk of splitting, but we had decided almost 10 minutes into the three hour conversation. We're not splitting. We're putting our vote somewhere and we're praying that, you, you know, we're going to, we're going to try and make it so that they play the idol in the wrong place. Mm-hmm. And there was a question of how do we do that? And what we ended up deciding on, and I will say, this was my idea, and it was my plan, is they need to think that we need, that me and Brittany need Fall's vote. So we need to convince them of two things. We need to convince them, A, that Mitch thinks he's in the middle, so because mm-hmm. we don't want them thinking that we're working with Mitch. Mm-hmm. So that mm-hmm. was why me and Brittany were kissing up to Liz. That's why we were talking to Fall. And that's why we okay. really needed Mitch to go to Liz and be like, we're in the center. Mm-hmm. So, you know, Fall goes on this big rant, like, oh, like, Mitch thinks he's in the center. What what George doesn't show is that that was our plan. That was, that was your plan working. Mm-hmm. And then there was another conversation where me and Thal are talking, and Thal, or I don't remember if it was me, Thal, and Brittany, but Thal was like, so, you know, they really want my vote, and, like, ideally, like, I obviously won't vote for them, but they don't know that. That's what we wanted. We wanted them to think that, you know, they didn't need to play the idol because mm-hmm. it was just me and Brittany voting together and then Fall, Tarowski, and Liz voting together and then Mitch voting wherever they told them to vote. Okay. So that was our plan. That's what we were, we were, we were having tons of meetings. We were talking to Tarowski. We were talking to Thal. We were talking to Liz and everything we were doing was so that they thought that me, Mitch, and Brittany were not voting the three of us together so that they would. Gotcha. We were trying to avoid that idol being played. Yeah. That's smart. It was just frustrating because yeah. it felt like he, they didn't show me yeah. talking about that plan at all. Like, they showed yeah. a yeah. little bit of that plan from Brittany and Mitch. But that was my plan. Like, I came That's up with true. that. And I was just as involved as Mitch and Brittany. And yeah. they made me look like a sucker. And, like, <laughs> it, it, was just, it was really frustrating to watch. Yeah. Especially just to watch it work perfectly. Because, you know, mm-hmm. at the time, we didn't know if it was working. But watching mm-hmm. Falls Confessionals, it was like, wow. We did it. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, they didn't they didn't give me that satisfaction in the episode, so that really sucked. Yeah. Oh, I'm hard. sorry. Yeah. But yeah, so while you three are meeting, there's the other three of Tarowski, Liz, and Thal. They're like, Thal's is saying, like, us three have to get on the same page. So they meet in the graffiti alleyway, which was honestly <laughs> kind of cool. It is cool. <laughs> Does anyone know where that is? Yeah, it's, do you yeah. know where Necto is? Yeah. It's that alley right behind Neck, though. Or across the street. Fun. Yeah, it was super cool. Hey, guys. So this week, I omitted something from the episode that maybe not all audiences wanted in the first place. But basically, it involves the Liz and Alex's newfound relationship and also newly destroyed relationship in the same episode. But when it was first being solidified in the alley meet, uh, which was just a weird location, um, it was in a back alley behind a coffee shop. And they couldn't get a spot in the coffee shop, so that's why they were back there. But also they just, you know, one of them in particular didn't want to go back in the coffee shop to go to the bathroom when they needed to relieve themselves. So there was actually a moment in that conversation where Tarowski walked a little ways away, um, not that far away, uh, and just peed there in the back alley. It really, you know, bonded those three, I think, permanently afterwards, um, because anyone who sits through an alliance meeting where one of them is peeing, you know, I think you're, you're pretty close at that point. Uh, this continues the trend of, for some reason, people peeing on and around, like, off-camera, uh, with Lavana and now Tarowski. Hey guys, please stop. And yeah, so this is where the out like Tarowski kind of does some lying here. This is when he comes to terms with the fact that he's a super villain. Oh my god, I feel like he's done that a while ago, but 
Yeah, but like that was just a villain. Now he's a super villain. Oh, okay. You see, we created <laughs> this villain though because we talked about him like a villain. And you yeah. see that in the game. We're like, oh, Tarowski, yo, oh, Tarowski, this. And we we used him almost as like a what's that where you like create, you know, like the oh, yeah. where people talk about something like it's scary and it like becomes real. It's like, oh, yeah, like, yeah. like you talk about it enough and then it becomes real. Yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. to this day believe that Tarowski was not he was a villain because we turned him into one for our own benefit. Yeah, right. We do, we do hear Brittany every single episode saying that she she just wants Tarowski to be gone. <laughs> um, I think yeah. it's I think it's interesting though, he does in his like individual confessionals, he acts like this big mastermind or like the way that he talks, he definitely portrays a villainous personality but when you see like at the end of tribals or post tribal stuff he at least for the past couple weeks he's like just over by himself he's like if right. anyone wants to talk to me like i have no idea what's going on he like tries yeah. to act like all this like innocent naive like out of the loop which like mm-hmm. he kind of is i mean he definitely has more information than a lot of people think um right. but there's like the two sides to it. i don't know I don't completely see him as a villain. I can see why people would think he is. Yeah. I, I feel he's, like he's, he's more just of a villain a very than game. most of the people right. left in the game, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When you think about it, compared to Thal and Liz and Leia. Oh, yeah. Definitely. You know, he, you, they're definitely not going to call any of these people a villain. Mitch, no, maybe yeah. a little bit in this episode, but up until now, he's like the opposite. He's like the nice Midwestern boy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, he definitely been, had been shown to be a strategist, but he hadn't been shown to be very arrogant, I think, until really recently. So, he's that, so arrogant. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Man. <laughs> I'm like, I've never seen that side of Mitch. It surprises me. The game really affects you. I mean, you guys know, like, you, you get yeah. hit, like, you're in the thick of it. And, you know, he, he had that whole. You know, Liz is disgusting. Like, I can't believe she wants to do this. I, it's really weird because, you know, like, they only show a little bit of it, but you have hours and hours and hour long conversations with these people. And, like, mm-hmm. the concept that you're just kind of lying your ass off for 90% of it is like, you know, you're trying to simultaneously come to terms with that with yourself. You're like, I've been lying to pretty much everyone about something. Mm-hmm. And then you're trying to come to terms with being lied to by someone else for all that. And it's yeah, it, it's weird. It's like it's like a very like eerie feeling, and I and I understand how like like it could come off as very like okay, like that was part of the game, but I mean again, like the emotions of it, they just kind of get to you, and yeah, even if it in theory makes sense, someone would lie to you. You're sitting there being like, we talked for so many hours, mm-hmm. so long, we have this relationship. I can't believe she lied to me. It's ridiculous, you know. Yeah, there's also that third layer of like you're actually becoming friends with them. Yeah. But then, like, we also still have to be lying, and it's just, like, I don't know. It, like, yeah. all becomes jumbled. Definitely puts a lot of pressure on you, I yeah. think. Yeah. Um, and I can, yeah, I can definitely see how people have changed throughout the game. I don't know if Mitch has really changed as a person, but definitely I think that the survivor can definitely bring a different side out of you. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I have also, like, Mitch is, Mitch is such a wonderful, awesome person. It's he like, is. You, He's really, just, like, really a nice guy, like. Yeah. He's a sweetheart. Yeah, he mm-hmm. is. Survivor can just, like, bring out a different side of me sometimes. Like, you know, competition in general does. But Survivor, yeah. like you said, it's a competition that just lasts forever. It, and you obsess over it. You get, you get, it gets in your head. You get emotional. Like, you, you just don't, like, watching actual Survivor now, I have such more, like, I have a huge appreciation for the fact that, like, Monday morning quarterback, like, Yes, that theory, like, why would you say this? Like, why wouldn't you just do this? That makes sense now. Yeah. But at the time, you have had a million conversations. It's not super clear. And you're also emotional about it. And, you know, it gets to you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And you're going to write a thesis about that, right, I, I am going to write a thesis about that. I had a meeting yep. with my advisor today. You are? About, like, survival? Oh. I am writing a honors thesis in philosophy about the – the strategy profiles and the ethics of lying within competition. Wow. wow. Oh, that sounds really interesting. That will be good. You want to read that? Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. It, I, I'm excited about it. I, for, for those of you who don't know, I, it's kind of like, I hate talking survivor. I don't like mm-hmm. to bring it up. It, the game really affected me, but I am excited to write about it 
and you know i i see myself like and as like a gamer like i i love to win i thought i was going to go into this and just be like you know i'll do what i need to win but right. after after all those months like I was making extraordinarily emotional decisions and I was making decisions that were putting my line on the game for people I cared about Mm -hmm. my game on the line for people I cared about. So, you know, the game really does change you. And I am fascinated by that. Do you think you would, after the experience of survivor, you would ever consider doing it again? (gasps) I (gasps) would have told you no for many months, but yeah, I, you know, I love to win. (laughs) And I love the opportunity to try and win. Yeah. It's and not my nature Cooper to again. say no. Oh. oh. So we'll see Wait. what happens with that. Yeah. Stop Speaking it. of Survivor, let's get back to the episode. <laughs> so we have, so Thal, Leia, and Brittany have a plan to vote out Liz. So we want them to think that there's two votes going on Liz, but not three. So that yes. they don't need to play an idol. Yes. And I remember Thal was thinking that this might be a misdirect. To like throw his vote onto, onto Liz, but which is which was... was another thing that we were hopeful for because we figured either Thal thinks we're telling the truth and there's mm-hmm. only two votes on Liz, or Thal thinks we're lying and the votes definitely aren't going on Liz, mm-hmm. right? Which was the genius part of the plan because then the votes really were going on Liz, but we knew Thal wasn't going to do it and we didn't care, right? Oh, and then <laughs> there was a meeting between Thal and Brittany, which was kind of funny. Because Brittany was just kind of sitting there, like, <laughs> internally fuming, giving him some side eye. Mm-hmm. And Thal's, like, <laughs> apologizing. And they both know it's, like, doing nothing for either of them. <laughs> right, right. Like, they both implied they want Liz gone when they were, like, at that meeting. But, like, basically, I, I think Brittany even said, like, they accomplished nothing from that meeting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It is, it is funny to see some of these combinations of people that, like, I, I don't know if we've seen Thal and Brittany. No, but we have seen yeah. them talk. No, but I feel like most of what we've seen has been, like, them talking about each other or, like, right. having a phone call or something. <laughs> I don't know if you've actually seen them meet in person. Yeah. Um, I Like this. But it's, like, I feel like they have had kind of, like, and I don't know, maybe, I don't know what my impression is if it, or it's wrong. Like, this, like, secret, this, like, secret relationship that, like, neither of them actually really valued that much. <laughs> but they both, like, still be like, oh, yeah, so we have a secret yeah. alliance and, like, we want to protect each other. But neither of them are really that into it. Just kind of like a thing where they both kind of have to pretend like, oh, so are you going to say stuff? Or am I going to say stuff? Or like, who's going to do it first? I mean, then... Brittany's pretty upset at all. She's pretty like personally upset. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I Brittany took a lot of things really personally. And I, not, not in a bad way. Like I did too. Like everyone's it. You know, you're in this game. And again, you're having hours and hours mm-hmm. of conversation with people. And then you find out they were lying. Especially if you were telling the truth, you know, you just so happen to be telling the truth. You have this, like, kind of, you know, when we live our lives, we do have kind of an entitlement to the truth. Yeah. Like, yeah. I expect when I go out and I have a conversation with someone on the street that they're going yeah. to be honest with me. Just because right. society can't function if everybody's lying all the time. So then you find out that, you know, especially in a case where you had been telling the truth, you find out they were lying. And there's this, like, instinct of that's not okay and you know you forget for a second you know you're in a game and they're trying to win because yeah, yeah. or about the times yeah. where you've lied to somebody and they've told you right. the truth and yeah. it seems like totally fine when you do it yeah, that like way it's, that's like, oh, that's that's justified, but and that's, yeah. it's, it's just part of the fact that like we are living our normal lives at the same time we're mm-hmm. not just in this deserted island just playing survivor and gaming all the time no like right. we're living our lives so we're supposed to go from okay i'm gonna have an hour-long conversation with this person and it's totally socially acceptable to lie my ass off because I'm trying to win the game. But then I have to go talk to this other person who, you know, who's not a survivor. Mm-hmm. And it's not socially acceptable to lie then. Because, you <laughs> yeah. know, you're a normal human being and, you know, they expect you're going to tell the truth. And that's kind of messed up if you're lying to them. Mm-hmm. So, you know, mentally, it's it's a weird disconnect. Yeah. It is really interesting well, to hear about the thoughts about behind what goes and all this stuff. Because I feel we don't get to see at least, like, too much of people having, like, this really this moral struggle. We have seen a little bit. But I think mm-hmm. that it's um, interesting to hear about it in, yeah. in more depth. No, I, I definitely think that one of the coolest parts of of College Survivor is you have to go back and forth between playing Survivor and living your life, which is just a totally different element than going to a deserted island and playing yeah. a super competitive game. Right. I do think, and I will, I will come back, I do think that George did a really good job this episode of 
like conveying this like the emotion i think in the season in general he has done a good job and i think especially mm-hmm. this episode we do get to see a lot of how this game is taking an emotional toll and how right. like these decisions do have a lot of emotion behind them and, and sometimes the emotion can distract you from making the best move for your game uh, i think we're going to see some of that in this episode too um so yeah i think that's yeah. at this point in the game we are seeing that stuff affect people more than it would have at the beginning when it's like you don't even know these people you know yeah the people that we don't see really having a ton of that kind of moral conflict are the alexes though it seems like they are totally fine with the fact that they're both roommates and both playing but they're not like really out to get each other you know it's kind of how the game played out a little bit yeah it made sense it never didn't make sense for them yeah. to work together that's true. That's like, true. Do you think if you and Coop were on the same tribe and the Alex's were on separate tribes, like I think it would have been interesting. Mm-hmm. I you know, Cooper and I like the Alex's started working together right away. Cooper and I, we've talked about this since the game is over, we're like, that was dumb. Mm-hmm. They have this huge advantage. They have a massive advantage, you know. You know someone and nobody knows you know them. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, the, we assumed from day one that they were working together and because the, you would have meetings with them, like, it was just a vibe. Like, you got, you know, it's Alex and Alex. And that came off. And they did, maybe they, like, hid the fact that they were roommates, which they thought was a big deal. But they didn't hide the fact they were working together. Cooper wanted to be, from the Cooper and I both wanted, from the beginning, to use our relationship to our advantage. So, even if we had been on the same tribe, I think we would have gone out of our way to make it look like we weren't close. And that could have gotten tricky. Mm-hmm. So, I, that's a whole other thing. That, like, mm-hmm. that was how that was played out. I do think it helps, though, the fact that they hid the um, the fact that they're roommates because, yes, they were working together from the beginning and it was clear that they were working together, but nobody would really know how close, how closely they were working. Because you see in a lot of their videos, Thal is on the phone with Liz when she tells him about her idol and Tarowski sitting right there. Like, Gosh, no one would expect so that type of At thing. At that point in the game, we probably would have. <laughs> Not in the very beginning, but, like... I'm telling you, like, I don't know how, but every conversation I ever had during that game was, like, the Alex's. And their they, their staged fight, I remember very distinctly <laughs> Mitch and Cooper and I, like, independently laughing and being like, did you see the fake fight? <laughs> like, I thought it would have been funny if George had included that. Like, us being like, oh, yeah, the fake fight. We knew it was a fake fight when it happened. And we, okay. we made fun of them for it. And the funny thing is, like, they thought that the fight works. Oh, like, my God. Oh, the fight was so such a good idea. They totally bought it. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what's helping us out this week. Like, yeah. like okay. What? No. No, we knew it was <laughs> fake. Thal's showing a little bit of weakness, I think, in this episode and the last episode. But up until now, he has been kind of... Yeah, we have seen the Alex's succeed a lot. But they, we have seen them have a little bit of... Uh, a little bit of a couple of pitfalls. There was the whole hotel incident, and now all of a sudden, there's this picture that that Brittany has of of both of them on the same profile picture. Cover, no, it's the, the it's cover a cover photo. photo. So Thal's cover photo from 2015 has Tarowski in it. <laughs> but I guess Leah, you kind of explain why this wasn't such a big deal at this point. But they thought it was the biggest deal. Like Thal was like, "We're over." <laughs> oh my god! It, it should and, have been over. Liz, that should have been the important one. Because we're not working with them. We assume they're working together. But Liz is, like, in a very close alliance with the two of them. If I were her, I would have been like, damn. Like, this isn't good. Mm -hmm. Wait, did she know about it? She knew about it, right? Yeah. I I think Brittany told her about that. Yeah. So Brittany is the one that found out from the photo. And then she then told Brittany and Mitch. I like how he's Taraski's still playing it off at this point. Like, because Mitch brings it up to him, and Taraski's like, "Oh yeah, we were in like in a club together. We had some mutual friends." Like, he's still lying. (laughs) He definitely thought he was like the mastermind for saying that. Like, oh, I, I I have Mitch so fooled. You know, Thal is very cocky this episode. Yeah, which is why I'm so upset because we, oh, it like. He was playing into Mitch's hands in that conversation. He was playing into me and Brittany's hands in the other conversation. And he really messed up. You know? The the whole... What he thought was happening... Like, I don't even know what he thought was happening. But... He yeah, was for that week. Yeah. Well, you know, we do see that their trio is just formed. And I definitely, for a while in this episode, thought it was going to be some sort of, like, three versus three. 
um, thing. But yeah, it was clear that your guys' plan was uh, was doing a number on him. We, I mean, yeah, like I said, we just really, we really wanted him to either believe us that we were voting with him, or we wanted him to think we were lying and that we were trying to misdirect his vote mm -hmm. onto the list. So that was the wrong decision. Yeah. And ultimately, I guess he got scared mm -hmm. and, and really did think we were misdirecting him. Mm -hmm. yeah. So my question is, why did Liz think that Thal was going to get three votes? So Thal was super sketched out by me and Brittany. I've, I've talked to them about this, and it doesn't make a lot of sense looking back on it, but at the time, Thal's theory was that we were misdirecting his vote and using him, like, his willingness to, like, turn on Liz as, like, an excuse to, like, uh... to, like, that he's, like, shady. So yeah. he thought that because, and he was right, that me and Brittany's, focus was on, it wasn't on Liz it wasn't on Tarowski it was on him so he thought that that meant you know they would never put it together that we would vote Thal okay you know, that like we were trying to misdirect Thal's vote but at the same time he's the one person that you know they would never guess that we were putting our votes on so that it made the most sense for us that, you know in in, in actuality, we were always talking do we put the votes on Tarowski or Liz mm. like that was our conversation we decided Liz and it was always really going to be Liz but in Thal's head it made sense like our actions implied that we were going to put votes on Thal okay that makes sense so okay. Thal has this yeah. like Thal gets all scared that we're you know our master plan is to put the votes on him and mm -hmm. I guess he tells this to to Liz mm -hmm. I remember I don't know if, if this is out of order but when we so, you know we're, there's the small talk that's happening mm -hmm. And it's super awkward. It's super awkward. And Liz stands up to play the idol. And you should have, like... And, like, you can see my face and Britney's face. Like, we were both, like, one of us is going home. Yeah. She stands up to play the idol. I am so confident. You know, in my head, like, yeah. like they, we, yeah. damn, they beat us. Mm -hmm. Like, we tried our best this week. Oh, they beat us. Like, she's playing the idol, and I'm going home. I, I She stood up, and I was... I would like, almost given up entirely. I was like, wow. I was coming to terms with the fact that I was going home. Oh, and my gosh. He played that. You can see my mouth drop when she plays it for fall. And my first thought, because at the time I didn't, why would she play it for fall? My first thought was something's happening crazy behind the scenes that I just was completely oblivious to. And I wasn't excited as I should have been. Like, they did it wrong. I was freaking out. I was like, what's going on? Like, they know something I don't. And so oh when the when the votes were read, I was like, I was half convinced I was gonna like see something crazy happen. Dang. But when she played, when she said, "I'm gonna play this for Alex Thal," like, oh my god! All of a sudden, like I had been like in my head, I was out, and then I was like, "What?" Yeah, that would have been so crazy. I remember seeing you like smile as you were receiving votes, and I was thinking like. Oh, was Leia excited because like she knows that like, I would be safe for a rock shot. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it was. I was also like wondering, like, did you know that this was gonna happen, or you were like, I didn't realize that you've been freaking out. But like, yeah. I no, I I walked in assuming that there would be three on me, and three on Liz, and if she played an idol, I was going home. That was my assumption. I didn't really know if it was gonna be me or Brittany, but it would have been ridiculous, really, for them to vote out Brittany. It made much more sense for them to vote out me, but. When she, when they were reading out the votes, I was pretty, and it became clear that something crazy hadn't happened, and that like what I thought, like I was pretty excited because mm -hmm. I was, I was actually, um, and you can see me staring at Brittany, and you can see Brittany staring at me. We were locked eyes because I thought there was a real chance she flipped, she would flip. oh, not because wow. of the strategy, just because she didn't want to go to rocks. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think it's. I feel like this season has had a lot of ties. I was just about to say, like, what number tribal is this that has gone yeah. to a tie? It's the third. But one of them, wow. only two of them went to rocks. One of them, um, Mitch flipped and sent. Or not right. Mitch, Saul flipped and yeah. sent LeBonahome. Yeah. Right. I feel like that's still a lot. This, this one season. almost went to rocks, though. Yeah. It, that happens in College Survivor a lot, though. That's not oh, something okay. that was unique to our season. It's, it's just the way that the game kind of functions you more so than actual survivor you kind of get close to the group of people and there's a lot less arbitrary like mm -hmm. jumping yeah. right and there's just not enough people there's usually two coalitions yeah. there's usually not enough people for three 
So you yeah. have to give me more ties. Oh, also, I wanted to give a shout out to Akshay's facial expressions during this <laughs> tribal. Yes. Oh, they've it given us wild. such great meme content. Such yeah, Cooper, good. Actually, yeah, Cooper was better. also yeah. good. But there, I, I remember Akshay telling me he was trying to be just as dramatic as Eliza. From, oh, um, yeah. I, I part of me kind of loves seeing Cooper and Akshay like back together again on the jury. Yeah, like they had a little falling out, but now like they're together. Oh. They're like both like getting surprised together in the jury, yeah, and I was like true. smiling. I was like, you oh. know, they've been bonding in Ponderosa, mm-hmm. eating all the food. You know, yeah. they're in a good mood. So Liz plays her idol for Thal, and when after the Revo or whatever, they have to like come to a decision. Can we talk and about then, the fact that she played it for Thal though? Like, yeah. that's so wild to me. I can't believe it. I man. understand Fall's theory that it made sense that votes were going mm-hmm. on him. Yeah. But, you know, like, because, like, we, they would never expect that because we were trying to work with Fall. But yeah. if I had an idol and I met, what was it, Final Six? Yeah, if I'm at Final Six, that idol's being, I'm sorry, unless I am super confident, I am not taking someone else's word for it. Mm-hmm. Because Fall has a million reasons to lie. Like, I understand. Right. And she must have felt so close with him. Yeah. It just... Thal says, you know, I think that it's being played on me. And she she says, okay, that makes sense. Plays it. Like, not yeah. he might be lying. Not, like, if he's not lying, I may as well protect myself. Like, yeah. That, I know. So, I, especially since we sat through, like, all these trials in a row where she's been in, like, a lot of danger. And hasn't, right. And then hasn't played it. And last also week was ballsy. Yeah. yeah. Last week especially, yeah, it was so ballsy. She should have gone home last week. Maybe I know. She mm-hmm. but, Honestly, yeah. We haven't talked about Liz enough this episode, but this is Liz's <laughs> last episode. Yeah. And I, I've got to say, Liz has had a great season, but this episode, I'm not, I've not been super impressed with Liz's gameplay. She let herself get, so her and the Alexes really did let themselves get played by me, Mitch, and Brittany, but yeah. her more than, like, she let the Alexes, she let her own yeah. alliance just kind of make the decisions for her that week. I think that's what it was. It's yeah. not like she made some bad decision. It, she was just kind of a, a follower that week. Yeah, so they they knew she had the idol now, so they're like, "Hey, the plan is you're gonna play the idol and fall." That's like, if I were her, I would have been so sketched out by that. Yeah, I'm in this alliance with two guys who've known each other forever, and they're mm-hmm. trying to get me to play my idol for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, and I've been the th- I've been the biggest threat for a super long time, and if it ties, <laughs> if I play it, and if it ties, then I might have a draw a rock. Yeah, like, like if the votes weren't on her, then she would, you know, it's yeah. So I, I just feel like it, this fit is just it's, you need to play it for yourself. I'm, I, I do think that this is definitely a very very fatal mistake, which we'll we'll get into that when it happens. But this goes, I do feel like this is a very just fatal mistake. Unfortunately, it goes to show Liz's personality of like when she did feel like she finally had that relationship with Thal, mm-hmm. like that. You know, going back to the beginning of the game, it really could have been like the three of us, me, Brittany, and Liz, like sitting down and like like when I was with Mitch, like. Why did we become close? Because we told each other everything and we like built this relationship. And I didn't go out of my way to build that really with the three mm-hmm. girls. And if the game had played out differently and we had done that, then I believe she really probably never would have turned on me or Brittany because that would have been like her emotional connection. But she's just a really great person. She's a really trusting person. And when she built that relationship with Thaw, like it was done. It was like she mm-hmm. was just going to trust him at that point. And if he screwed her, he screwed her. Right. And- yeah. The Alex did a good job of like, of kind of almost wooing her that week. I remember Trasky being like, I would vote Thal before I voted for you. Like, saying all these things that, like, I feel like kind of got really to her. Yeah. She totally yeah. bought it. She, she totally bought, bought it. it. And it's mm-hmm. sad that, I mean, like, but that was her personality from the beginning, the kind of person right. that, like, would be super friendly and would buy into that. Yeah. These three votes, and she's very surprised when her name is the one that's that's coming up instead of Alex Fall. I wouldn't put it as like it's not like it didn't make sense to her. She was maybe not as much surprised as much as she was like realizing. She what realized, just yeah. I think she did realize right after. I think she realized at tribal how much she messed up. Yeah. But I don't think she could foresee. Yeah, you know, we so you know, we were talking for a long time, but Liz and I were together for a lot of it because we weren't really in the conversation. And I was like, look, like Mitch is not turning. Mitch is safe. Like, I, I don't know about Brittany, but, like, I know for 
Mitch is not turning, so, like, I'm not going home tonight. Mm -hmm. And she was, like, and she said to me, she looked me dead in the eye, there's zero chance that the Alex turn on me. And dang we both just kind of sat there looking yeah. at each other and me thinking in my head the reason that i'm so confident about mitch is because we're so close but also because he's safe and i yeah. was thinking in my head like are you serious right now like you really believe like i remember well i don't because the i the fact that she played the idol for thaw and the fact that she looked me dead in the eye and said there's zero chance they turn on me i think it was at that moment i realized wow liz like really mm -hmm. really trust these guys I'm curious what your guys' reactions to, like, watching the, the deliberation. Like, did you think in your head anyone would flip? I feel, I feel like this is such a, like, crazy kind of situation where only two people would ta would have to draw rocks. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like this is the one – I feel like every time in, Je in like, Sir CBS Survivor when Jeff says, all right, unless you guys can reach, um, you know, a unanimous vote, we're going to draw rocks. And I always thought, like, well, it's over. Like – this never yeah. gonna, you're never is never gonna happen there's well, never the, gonna be a case where they agree unanimously the thing this is like the is, first time i've ever really thought it would you know yeah well the thing is because liz has already been kind of targeted in the past it's like i could see like everyone i feel like had said that they wanted her out at some point so i could see people like flipping to unanimously go for her mm -hmm. What's the well, thing? The problem is you know and and a lot of people i think probably talked about this you know, in, in, in comments and probably in their own discussion. But to me, in theory, if I'm anyone sitting down there, including Tarowski and including Brittany, I want to go rocks because you're taking a 50, 50 chance that you, you know, have a solid shot, you know, a solid path to the final versus a 50, 50, um, versus a hundred percent chance that if you don't win eventual individual immunity, you're going home next week. Mm -hmm. Like, I can't believe, like, I understand, like, Tarowski, like, didn't want to go home like that, but they have put themselves in a very precarious position because it's very clearly three versus three. So if one of your three goes home, it's now very clearly yeah. three versus two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know. Yeah, I agree. And that means you basically, yeah, because if it's three versus two, then that means that best case scenario Either way, if, if you or one of your other two wins immunity, the other mm -hmm. goes home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you need to win. You need to win. Basically, if you don't win immunity, you're gone. Mm -hmm. Like, if you personally don't win immunity, you will be gone. And he basically decided he wanted to, like, in his, I don't know what his deliberation, but in theory, he's, he decides that he thinks he can win challenges more than he can win a rock draw. I mean, it is 50-50. That is very tough odds. Well, Brittany and I have talked about this a little, and she insists she was never going to flip. But you can see how scared she was. She yeah. didn't want to go to Rocks, and and I don't I don't take that personally. Like I don't I wouldn't have wanted to go to Rocks. But m even if she had turned to Mitch and said, "I want to flip," Mitch is sitting there saying, "No, like I'm taking the fifty fifty chance yeah. that I'm on top next week." Yeah. And I can't believe that Thal didn't force like not because he was turning on Tarowski, just because he's like, "Look, dude, you're thinking about this wrong." Like. Like that, if I it had been like Mitch on the line, I might have forced him to go to rocks, not because I saw it as turning on him, just because I was like, dude, like we're gonna be on the bottom next week if I flip with you right now. Mm -hmm. You know, we got to take this 50 50 chance that we're on top yeah, next week. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I totally agree. This was the part where we had the flashback, which was literally one of the most dramatic, intense <laughs> things I've ever seen. It was so intense because yeah. it flashback, like, like George goes like like thaw and he was like thinking and then it flashes back to day two where he's like his hair's shorter he's like less was rugged more like youth skin. in his eyes some innocence yeah he looks a lot know. different yeah yeah he was definitely more innocent back then now he's been through a lot mm -hmm. but um yeah and then in in that flashback he was talking about like oh yeah like right now i'm definitely closest to tarowski but like he was talking about how he loves this game so much so like he might at one point have to like sacrifice that relationship to get to make it further in the game, and then he was like, "But we'll cross that bridge when we get there." And like it sounded like he was gonna flip on Tarowski. It seemed like this was the this has to be the bridge. Yeah. Right here. you know he's he has to decide whether to cross this bridge now. And yeah, and he didn't. He didn't. Well, yeah, and then he was like, "It's Liz," and Liz's face was so sad.
Oh, which is yeah. it's just brutal because she played the idol for him, mm-hmm. and then and he goes and booked her out. It's basically like in a way he had to, if he would have said no, she'd be safe. Right. Ross gets to draw a rock 50-50. So it's basically he, he either he says Liz and she's voted out, or he doesn't. And Tarouse gets a 50-50 chance of going home. So he's basically saying that, like, a 50% chance of Fall going home, I would rather take that. I'd rather take you 100% going home mm-hmm. than the 50% chance of uh, Yeah. No, I guess it's, choosing is so obviously choosing Tarowski over it's Liz. It's so like, obviously the wrong choice. <laughs> when you have this girl who just played the idol for you, obviously she's going to stick together. Well, I, I, I think that Tarowski's right. going to stick together with him, too, though. Yeah. I, I know, but I think that... that. No, I think, but, yeah. but no, but what I'm saying is that, like, Liz is, like, objectively, I think, yeah. at this point, maybe I'm reading this wrong, you can, it's better than me, I think Liz is a bigger, like, threat to you guys than he was, so that if it was, if it was Liz and Thal the next week, who would you have gone for first between Liz and Thal? I mean, that's pretty arbitrary, we would have been threatened by either one of them, mm-hmm. we were, th- all three of them, like, like, we, Mitch was different, but me, I don't know what Mission Brittany was thinking. Me personally, I knew I couldn't beat any of them. Mm. I, they had to all three get through that week to be in a good position. Like he, like to me, like the all should have forced Tarowski to suck it up and take the shot. Oh yeah, because oh yeah. He was yeah. gonna. Yeah, was one hundred percent yeah. gonna be like. Yeah. Assuming that rocks went bad for him, then no matter his decision of whether or not to send Liz home, then. You know he was he was going to be in a bad decision mm-hmm. next week, and he just made it like a hundred percent that he's going to be in a bad decision. It's just like we're saying it's yeah. But no, it, to answer but I, question, I, just, I guess I was just trying to say like maybe there's a possibility that even though both would have been bad decisions, that like e- the bad position of the fifty percent was actually a better bad position yeah. than the other. Yeah, bad yeah, position. yeah. Opportunity cost. I yeah. think the important uh, yeah. part of it is that he didn't even consider that. Mm-hmm. He didn't stop to consider who would I rather, if I can only have one of them, yeah. who would I rather have? I don't think he thought about that. I think it was like, you know, me and Tarowski had this deal and I'm going to honor that deal over what Liz just did for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that's what really was hurtful to Liz. Like beyond that, we, you, were, you were saying how like she just had this complete trust and this like emotional connection. But like I, she just like was so just felt so burned by this. She was. I mean, this is like pretty yeah. much the biggest burn you could have, right? No. Playing an idol for someone and then sending you home. That's yeah. like. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's, like, it's just so sad because a... she had been, you know, in such a good spot for so long. I mean, that's such a good spot, but she had been a big threat in the game, and uh, to go out this way with an where you have an idol, you have a chance for just automatically being immune. And instead, it's just played so poorly. Yeah. I, I you know, I want to say that, like, well, Liz definitely messed up. If she, just in, in Survivor Game Fair, if you're going to play an idol in that situation, like, you're taking a gamble either way. Take the gamble on yourself. Yeah. You know, ensure that right. okay, if I lose this gamble, I'm still going to be here next week. Because, you know, it's Survivor, it's another week, there's always a chance. Right. I want to take a shot. And I'm going to make sure it's the type of shot where I'm there next week. But I also, you know, want to step back and just because I'm here, give credit to me and Mitch and Brittany because <laughs> we really, like, our goal that week was to put our votes on someone and have them play an idol wrong. And we did it. And it yeah, was that, deliberate. That it wasn't yeah, an it accident. There you Good go. job, Leia. Good and job. I'm so proud of you. Liz, <laughs> it, was, it was very, very amazing to watch. And unfortunately, Liz, with her wearing her chokers has choked in the game oh now yeah to death. jack we have a eulogy for liz here yeah i think liz <laughs> is somebody who at the start of the game you saw that she was this bright smiley girl but you didn't realize how much she would draw you into her orbit and i think that goes for both viewers and the players in this season absolutely um True. like she very quickly rose to a spot where like we could see that she had like really good social connections with everybody, even when like there who was the time it? she was at the bottom of Maison Six. Yeah, she was number six in Maison. Yeah, six, yeah, she actually. was in the six in the Maison Six, and the, you know there was that inner four before that. And she was still able to work past that and like find herself in a really good position at the merge. And like I think she had like pretty good awareness of knowing when things are kind of going wrong for her that she was she had to go jump and make a alliance with the Alexes. And you know if she would have just 
played an idol correctly, that uh, line to three could have very easily gone all the way to the end. Yeah. She played it for herself. Yeah. Then there we go, you know? Mm-hmm. If she would have done the obvious move, you would have been home dude, and fine. It, it was ballsy of us to actually put the votes on Liz again. Like a second week in a row of her not playing it. Mm-hmm. But we yeah. were confident that in our plan that they wouldn't think that we were doing that. And that's just, that's insane. That's how we wanted to go out. Yeah. yeah. And Liz was smiling until the very end. Even in mm-hmm. her um, until then. professional. <laughs> she was like yeah, sad, was... but then all of a sudden she was like, but anyways, like I really enjoyed playing this game. She was like back to her little smiley yeah. self. It she definitely seemed like there's been yeah. some sort of passage of time where yeah. she had collected herself. Which made me feel even more sad. Like, oh, they had to like cut away because mm-hmm. she was like so sad. Then like to try to be happy at the end, and because yeah. she is so such a positive person. Yeah. Can I can I include one more thing in this? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I know for a fact that so Cooper and and Akshay were obviously there mm-hmm. right afterwards. You know the way that this worked is we all gave, not all of us. I gave Liz a hug, <laughs> <laughs> um, and Liz runs off like it's literally like her skipping off into the distance with Cooper and Akshay to go discuss things <laughs> that they can't discuss in front of us. Yeah. And the first thing that Cooper tells her in the car um, is about me and Mitch because me and Mitch were still secret. She still had no idea that from uh, day one, uh, Mitch and I were like each other's number one. And she was so surprised at that. Dang. She yeah. was like that when she, I mean, like, understandably. Mm-hmm. Like, dang. And that probably made a lot of things make a lot more sense yep. to her as For well. Sure. Yeah. yeah. She said, wow, this this person, this that was <laughs> my political marriage here <laughs> has actually been, been cheating on me with somebody else. Wow. They have another kind of political marriage. <laughs> Can I ask all of you, yeah. since you've all played technically a question, as we were just talking about like the reason Saul made that decision to stick with Taraski rather than Liz, at a certain point, you you're thinking about who you can beat and who you can't what do you do if you're kind of there and you're just realizing you can't beat anyone oh and you're but you're like being strung along and you know people are going to keep you around because of you have two choices right like your choice is create chaos and like try and do something crazy to Mm -hmm. like so that people will want to vote you the winner or your choice is you know you want the the season to be your story. You know, you want to help the people that are important to you and that you care about. At this point, like, Saul picking Tarowski, is that, like, because he thinks he can beat Tarowski rather than... I'm pretty sure everyone's admitted that Liz would win if she had stayed in the game. And I firmly believe, you know, talking to the Alices, yeah. like, that decision had absolutely nothing to do with who they thought they could beat. Okay. Yeah. That decision was... We're playing Survivor. Mm-hmm. This is my friend. This is my partner. We have a deal. I'm staying with him. Yeah. So we say goodbye to Liz. Hey, hopefully somebody, maybe the Alexes will take up the uh, the crown for um, the fashion icons now. <laughs> it looks like they've, yeah. they've dusted it off a little bit in this episode. Hopefully it won't be bad luck for them as it's been for um, Liz and uh, Nikhil. Well, as it was for Nikhil and Shay, and then now Liz. Mm-hmm. But you guys don't like my athletic shorts in every episode. I love almost I as love much as Coop's Michigan sweatshirts. <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh, do you want to mention too? Uh, before we close out here, that we did get a very good shot of Trowski's legs during the out. Oh my gosh! <laughs> oh, made the whole episode. It was uh, Mitch. It, Mitch did say that some people were disgusting, but yeah. he would probably not say that about yeah. Trowski and his legs. Yeah, he talked about you know the, like, there's some debacles going on. In this episode, and I only saw two debacle legs. If you know what I mean, (laughs) that was terrible. I don't. I will say I'm not a fan of Tarowski's legs. I I don't see what you guys. Whoa! Whoa, That is a hot take. With that, I have to ask Leah to get out of this podcast studio because she is objectively wrong there. But no, seriously, thank you so much, Leah, for coming on. Thanks for having me. Great to be here. Yes, so great to hear your perspective on the game, Leah. I feel like you've been very, very fun to watch. Um, especially since well, you found that idol. You, and I love it, especially at the beginning when you were whacking the bushes and you found the oh, idol. And amazing. I think that you've been um, a, a force in this season, even though if everything everything hasn't been shown. It's been tough, but we have seen a lot of great things from you, and I'm excited to see what what's the story with the finale yeah. coming soon. Katie, thank you for Hi. calling in from across the pond. <laughs> 
No uh, problem. It's only six in the morning now. Oh, I see. You're better. It's about, it's about it. Anyway, thanks for having me on, guys. No. There's still so much more I could tell you all about Cooper and Leia, but oh, we'll yeah. save that for another time. <laughs>